Hi everyone, it's great to see you. I have the exciting job this afternoon of uncovering the hydrangeas that have had painter's buckets on them all winter. But before I do that, a sneak peek at our beautiful garden path here that the Masons have been busily installing the last week and a half. I love how it is looking. It has that curved look. It's going to be beautiful. I'll show it to you when it's all done. So let's get to the painter's buckets. Back about December 1st, I went around our yard and started to protect those hydrangeas that I thought needed a little extra winter protection. So I did not put painter's buckets over all of my hydrangeas. This method is really for those hydrangeas that are newly planted, so their roots aren't that deep. When you picture the roots of your hydrangea, you know, year one, maybe they go down about this much and your frost level is going to get down quite deep in the ground. Almost probably how much root they have. By year three, you're gonna have a bigger root mass there. So even if your soil is freezing down the same amount, you're still gonna have plenty of roots that don't get frozen. So it's really that first, second year that you need to watch your hydrangeas the most carefully. You also need to have them small enough that they can fit under a bucket. And after a couple of years, that just isn't going to happen. So these are my first year hydrangeas that I wanted to give that little extra protection. This is great wind protection and a lot of the buds do get killed from real cold wind on them. From sudden frosts in the spring, this also gives that nice layer of air insulated insulation here. Um, so you leave the buckets on until between April 15th to May 1st in zone 6B. It is April 25th. I have checked the 10 day weather forecast. We do not have any freezes coming up in the next 10 days. Fingers crossed, at least that's what it says at the moment. So I am going to take off the painter's buckets. It's always interesting to see how they have done. Okay. So take a look at this. This is what I love to see. It already starts to leaf out under your bucket. So believe it or not, just like when I put them in the shed and there's no light in the shed, they start to leaf out in time. Look at how healthy this is. And I wanna do a quick comparison of this hydrangea to one that was out in the elements all winter. So I have a lot of new growth at the bottom. I have plenty of leaf growth showing up on the actual stems here too. Let's take a look at one that was outside. Here we have two summer crush hydrangea and they are hardy down to zone four. So they should be fine out in the winter. They are young. I could not fit this one under a bucket and I think I ran out of buckets so this one didn't get covered. And just as a comparison, you can see there's new foliage coming up from the bottom. The branches here have some buds but they're very dried up. I can tell that either windburn or frost got them. Now I'm not cutting any of these off because you always leave these, unless you can really tell that it's old dead wood. You leave these branches, <laughs> these twigs here that don't look very pretty until the end of May because there is still a chance that they will catch up and put out buds. Same with this one. And I think there's a couple buds coming here, it looks like, and there's some new growth at the bottom, but these are not as far as long as the one that was covered, which is always fascinating to me because they do all usually catch up in the end. Okay, let's take off some more buckets. This is Fuchsia Glow. Fuchsia Glow is one of those that is supposed to be hardy, but it's a new bush here, so I also covered this. Let's see how we go. Okay, this one does not have the growth that I would like to see. I don't know. Oh, it's so tough with hydrangeas. Sometimes you just have to wait, but I did the best I could, so we'll see. Let's keep going. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this one. This is Forever and Ever Peppermint. And I ordered this at the very end of last season. So excited, this is sort of a multicolored, like um, bicolored where it has a rim around the edge. 
beautiful and look at how great this looks I'm so glad I covered it up okay mm, glowing embers is coming in oh I even have some weeds okay a couple more this is exciting. This was my science experiment hydrangea protection here. Um, I have three of the Seaside Serenade Newport, one of my favorites, such a deep purple. These two were not covered. This one was. Let's see if there's any difference. Woo. Okay, so I'm looking at it. Looks like I got a couple old stems that grew a little mold. Looks like we have a lot of good base growth. All three survived though, and that is the important thing. We just wanna get them through. Let's head over to the next bucket. And here is Starfield, one of the 2023 hydrangeas that you will probably see in a lot of your nurseries this year. New for me in the fall. And woohoo, there it is. You can see how even we have some growth on the branch back here and down here. This is great. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good. There was one that was a little questionable, but it looks like most of them made it through just fine. And now we'll just have to wait and see how they bloom, of course, and really see if I have more flowers on the ones that I covered or not. So we have two hydrangeas here. We have one covered by the bucket. We have kimono, which is right here, and it is flushing out at the bottom, but the branches up here were obviously killed by the frost. Okay, let's see. Woo, and this is City Line Paris, and City Line Paris was not covered last year and didn't bloom for me. So now we check and we see if it's going to bloom or not this year. One more to go. Last bucket to take off. This, oh nice, a Seaside Serenade Martha's Vineyard. So you want to keep in mind, the reason I'm doing this is, you know, ultimate reason I want the most flowers possible. So by protecting the top like this, those that bloom on old wood, you might keep their buds more reliably than if they're just exposed to the weather. And it also gives the plant as a whole that extra added protection when it's really young. As you can see though, a lot of my other hydrangeas made it through and if they bloom on new wood, even if I lost those buds that were on the old wood, I'll still have beautiful blossoms this year. When I do a comparison to those hydrangeas that I kept in the shed though, those outshine them all. Let me show you. So I had those hydrangeas that were in the ground, not covered. They're coming to life now, looking good. Those that were in the ground that were covered, and I'm pleased to see that there's a lot of good growth going for them. And then there are these that I use my bag in the pot in the pot method, and these bags were stored in the shed. And when I take a look at these, these by far are farthest along and really are showing the most leaf growth on last year's wood. And that's where I'm gonna get my blossoms from the last year's growth. So I say to myself, it was worth dragging them all into the shed and all out and watering them through the winter because I just really have every confidence these are going to bloom fabulously. No matter what method you use with your hydrangeas, you can have beautiful blooms. And if you enjoy them, then that is the important thing. You are getting the wide angle shot for our closing today because I want to show you the beautiful crab apple tree that is in blossom right now. This is it at its finest and I love the color that it blooms. All of the bags and the pots that they will go into will be planted up in the next couple weeks. You'll be seeing that they don't stay here on the wall. They're gonna be spread out throughout the garden and it is going to be such a great gardening year. I am so excited about sharing all the great things that'll be going on in my garden and hearing from you about what's going on in yours. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.